You guys can take your seat. Welcome to Graceland Church. What a joy to have you in the house and worship with you. Um, how many know we have Taco Sunday right after this? I'm not going to talk about it too much because you'll be like, get this service on. Come on. Let me just tell you, Taco, Taco Sunday starts at noon no matter how quick service ends. So you can just be at peace. Tacos are not ready yet. If you don't know what Taco Sunday it is, is it means today, right after this service, from 12 to 2, uh, we have our Graceland Espanol team out there working right now to serve us and make literally the best tacos I've ever had in my life. Um, and it is open to every single person. We told First Service to come back at noon and be a part of Taco Sunday so we can meet people that we haven't met yet. You can build some relationships, and it's totally donation-based. And I'm going to share a little bit about that. If you got no money, just come eat for free. No one's going to be checking. You don't get your hand stamped or anything like that. But we're, we're raising some funds for a missions project we're doing in Rio Lagartos, Mexico. Very exciting. I'll share about it at the very end of service. I want to pray before we get into the message today. Uh, Scripture tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and as you know, uh, right now and all throughout history, there's been intense uh, turmoil, brokenness, contention uh, there in the Middle East, and I just want to invite you to pray with me. And I'm also going to pray, uh, and I see this as being related because uh, we are one church together. I'm going to pray for some of the churches right along our street uh, here, Lewisburg Pike in the area. Um, Lord, we thank you. Uh, that we are part of the big C church, meaning the one global church. There's just one church, and it's your church. Um, it's not about any of our church names. It's not about any of our denominations. It's not about any of our little networks. It is your church. We belong to you. We just declared you are the king of kings, Jesus, and it's yours. And we thank you that we're part of that church. And, and your church um, right now is, is hurting right now in there in the Middle East. There are many people suffering. There are people that don't know you there right now hurting and suffering. And we do what your scripture commands us to do. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for divine intervention there in Israel. We pray for divine intervention there in Iran, in Gaza, all over. Every, uh, every people group there, every nation there, God, we pray uh, that you would invade their space and bring new life and hope and peace. We pray for actual spiritual awakening, Lord. We pray for wisdom for those in leadership, not just there, but our nation. Uh, we're in an election year. We've got all kinds of things going on. We pray for wisdom for those in leadership. Uh, we pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. And we pray for the churches that we lock arms with right here in this area. I thank you for my brother, uh, Darren Tyler, over there at Conduit Church. Is their meeting right now. Um, I pray your blessing on them. I thank you uh, that we are one church together. I thank you for our friends down the road at Esperanza. I thank you for what you're doing there reaching and serving and loving Spanish speakers in the area. Bless them. I thank you for Gateway down the road. Uh, God, I thank you for the bridge. I thank you for Southview. God, I thank you for Church of the City. There's so many. And I thank you for these brothers and sisters in the faith. And we pray your church uh, right here in our area would be one, that we would be strengthened and that we would proclaim the name of Jesus uh, to our city, to our towns, to this whole region uh, with one voice. Uh, not, not arguing or, 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 or being concerned about the little differences and the things that there may be small disagreement on. We have one unifying factor, the name of Jesus and the fullness of the Spirit of God. And we pray for spiritual awakening in our nation. We know there isn't a political solution. There's only a spiritual solution. And so, God, may we, the church, wake up to the mission, and may we say yes again, afresh and anew. And we thank you. We're not separated from your church there in the Middle East. We are one in the Lord. And, Lord, there's places in, in the underground church in China where they're persecuted just for naming the name of Jesus or the missionaries that we just had a couple weeks ago uh, that are doing work in Sudan and Somalia. Uh, we're, we're one church, and, and we sense the need and the the, and the brokenness and the cries for help uh, wherever that's happening around the world. And we here at Graceland Church, uh, we say yes to our role in that story, uh, both right here with our neighbors and our neighbors around the world. And we commit it to you, Lord, in your name, Jesus. Amen. One of the things I believe in is developing strategic kingdom partnerships. So I love walking with uh, other friends, all those pastors I just pray for, I know personally we meet, we pray together, we talk together, we, we celebrate what God's doing in each other's churches. 
And I also believe in stewarding voices, meaning bringing in guests to speak here that bring legitimate value into the life of our church. I never want to be a church where we have people coming in and speaking that are guests where, where you guys are just like, I'm just not going to show up that day. You know, we want to have the exact opposite. We want you to know that if we're ever having an outside voice come into our church, that there's a reason for it and God wants to say something to you. You guys tracking with me? We want to flip that on its head. And so we take that real seriously. I do. Our staff does. And we've got the beginning of one of those partnerships and friendships here. I met Pastor Jeremy uh, Luisen just about six months ago. And he's come into fellowship with the same group that I'm ordained with called the Assemblies of God. And he grew up uh, in Brooklyn, New York, and was a part of one of my favorite churches in the world, which is called Brooklyn Tabernacle. And Jim Cimbala was his pastor all growing up. You might have heard of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Anybody? Really amazing. I love Pastor Jim Cimbala. I don't know him personally, but I've been around him a bunch. And one of his books called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, if you haven't read it, I encourage you to read it. It's, it's a return read for me. Every few years, I read it again. Every time I'm in a leadership role, I have our staff read it at some point. Uh, we might have even gone through it as a church once here, just a few years ago, I think. I can't remember, during one of our times of prayer and fasting. But Pastor Jeremy was a little kid uh, in that church putting some of those books together to be sent out to people that were ordering, because that book went all over the world. God used it uh, amazingly. And so he might have wrapped one of the books that I read. And, uh, and we met, and he pastors a church called Pioneer Church in downtown Memphis. Let's hear it from Memphis. Come on. We, in, we can love Memphis. Come on. I, what I envision when I'm developing a relationship, like what I sense uh, with Pastor Jeremy is uh, you know, a co-laborer laborer in a city in our own state that we begin to get to roll together, encourage each other, strengthen each other, so that 20 years from now, we're looking back on when these relationships started and in awe and gratitude for all the good things the Lord has done through that. You guys getting that? And by the way, that's true for you now too. Whoever you're making friends with is gonna shape your life. <laughs> Right, So get some good friends in your life. Pay attention uh, to what the Lord is doing as you, as you hear people talk. Don't, don't, I mean, you got to hang with people that, that don't have it all together. Obviously, we're going to hear about that today. But you got to get some friends in your life that lift you up right, and call you to the things of God. You'll be looking back on 20 years from now, grateful that you did. And that's part of what's going on here. I believe um, Graceland Church is going to be, I want to be like a sister church uh, with Pioneer Church. He has three beautiful daughters. And uh, so he's a girl dad like me. I did get a boy there on the end, too. Um, I, sometimes I say Clay is kind of more pet than kids right now. So it's, he's still like, so I st I'm, I'm just kidding. I absolutely love Clay. He's amazing. Um, by the way, Taco Sunday, I'll be there all in. Me and Clay got to roll a little bit early before, too, because he has a makeup um, uh, baseball game. So we're going to go uh, play some baseball this afternoon. Uh, but I'll still be there for Taco Sunday. Uh, he has three girls. He's going to show you some uh, photos of his family, share a little bit about his story. Uh, but I'm thrilled for you guys to get to he hear truly a phenomenal message uh, from a real deal pastor. So let's give a big hand for Pastor Jeremy as he comes on up. Graceland Church, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Um, like you said, my name is Pastor Jeremy. I was born, I came out of the hospital with the title, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm a pastor in downtown Memphis. Very First, before I get into who I am, can we just all stand to our feet and give a round of applause and honor for Pastor Nathan and Jess, as they've just led such a beautiful church. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your prayers. I'm honored to be here. Thank you, guys. I know today is a mission Sunday to raise money for a missions trip. I'm going to preach you all hungry. Don't you worry. <laughs> By the end of this service, them tacos are going to taste better than you thought. You're going to like, is this manna from heaven? <laughs> it might be. It might be. Uh, my wife and I, we planted Pioneer Church seven years ago. We started in our living room with eight people. Um, and so we've grown to about like 250 people, give or take, in downtown Memphis. Um, um, if, if they want to put up a picture of our family, that's us on Easter because you really only look decent on Easter. Um, you guys know this. That's the only time you can get all your kids dressed up decently. So um, that's my oldest Shekinah. She's a, a bonus child of mine. Um, her mother uh, is um, 
her mother is my cousin and her dad didn't show up. Because I want to let you guys know, just because a child didn't come from your loins doesn't mean you can't take them in. And so her dad decided not to show up, so I did. And so she is a part of our family. And then those are my three biological children, Ava, Isabella, and Sophia, and that's my wife. We've been married for 10 years, y'all. Come on. 10 years. And when I got her, I had hair. And then I got married, and the hair was like, mission accomplished. And they all <laughs> left, you know. Some of you guys know that. Come on now. Come on now. You know, it's like when, 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 we, <laughs> when we first got married, I didn't have grays. Um, Pastor Nathan was talking about being friends in the next 20 years. And I'm like, I'll still have the same haircut in the next 20 years. You'll be able to point me out. This beautiful chocolate milk dud. Um, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm black. Come on now, you can laugh at that. Uh, similar to you guys, we're in our giving campaign called Meaningful to Memphis. Meaningful to Memphis. We are petitioning heaven that God position us that we can build a community center in downtown Memphis that will also double as a church. Um, because you guys have heard about Memphis. Right. And you get so I tell people seriously, like Memphis is a modern day Nazareth. Right. But if Jesus can come from Nazareth, good can come from Memphis. Amen. 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 I know you hear all the bad stuff on the news, but don't believe what you hear all the time. The spirit of God is still dwelling there. So there's still hope there. And so I don't care because I tell people like, yeah, I'm a pastor Memphis. And they're like, oh, (laughs) Memphis. And I'm like, yeah. Jesus came out of Nazareth, and nothing good comes from Nazareth, but look at Jesus. So um, just, we ask that anytime you think about us, pray for us, believe with us, um, petition heaven for us. Um, Who here goes to the gym? Yep, it looks like, okay, all right, so some of you guys know, some of you guys don't know. When you go to the gym, right, it's a a sweaty place, you go there, and you know you did something because you'll walk out sore. You'd be like, oh, I actually did something. And that's what church is going to be like this morning. You're going to walk out of here sore in Jesus' name. Because there's going to be some spiritual muscles that you're like, oh, he touched it and it hurts. And so I know people say, the church is a hospital. The church is not a hospital. It's a gym, and I'm your coach. Thank you for coming. (laughs) Let's pray and then get into the word. Jesus, we just thank you. We love you. You have our affections. You have our attention. Let every word be planted in fertile soil. In Jesus' name, let us receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone here uh, work in retail or work with people, right? Come on, come on. Working in, if you worked in retail and you don't smoke and you don't drink, that's the hand of God in your life, all right? (laughs) That's the hand of God in your life. But I I worked retail for about eight years, and I learned something about human behavior. People will give you feedback when it's really, 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 really good, really great work, right? They want to be like, let me talk to your manager. You need a raise. Like, oh, my gosh, you are just, you've been so, anyone get that sometimes, yeah? And they're like, you're so amazing. I wish we had more of you. And you're like, stop, stop, you know? And the other time that they only give you feedback is when you're really, 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 really bad. And, it's, and now it, the tone changes, right? It's no longer like, oh, I want to talk to your manager. It's like, I want to talk to your manager. I need to talk to them right now. But that's the only time people give feedback. You want to know when people don't give feedback? When it's in the middle. When it's just okay. When it's just like, this was all right. It was okay. You know, like when someone cooks and it's not great, it's like, Keeps the worms down. It was okay. No one gives feedback for the middle people. No one, because those are the people that live just, do just enough to go on a 15-minute break. They do just enough just to get that person out of their face, right? It's no one who's inspired by their work. It's like, today, come on, some, some of us have had that day where you're like, I'm doing just enough to pay this bill. I'm doing just, but But I find that just something so biblical about that because in Revelation, God says, I know your deeds. They're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm. So I spit them out of my mouth and you say I'm rich and you say I've acquired wealth. I don't need anything. But you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, 
and naked. And that's what happens to some of us, is that some of us have heard the good news years ago, and we were like, look at this good news. It's transformed my life. It's broken the addiction. It saved my marriage. It saved my kids. I'm no longer who I was. Amen. Can I get a witness? I'm no longer who I want to be. But over time, we've allowed the media, we've allowed the world to take this good news and just make it okay news. It's just okay. It's just okay. And I don't really want to tell people about it because, Jesus, you're so polarizing, and I don't want to offend anybody, but they could offend us, and it's okay. They can talk bad about it, and it's okay. Well, they don't really get it. And this good news, which is good today, it's been good news for 2,000 years. It's just we've made it okay news. No longer does it hold its power. No longer is it something that we're proud of. Now it's just like, I don't want to tell anyone to go to church. I don't want to tell anyone about Jesus because, you know, the gospel may offend somebody. We've become middle people. It's like I, I go through the church motions, but I don't want to say anything out loud or do anything out loud to make someone uncomfortable. And we've replaced intimacy with intelligence sometimes, and then sometimes we just want to listen to the next podcast, or if I could watch the next sermon, or if I could do all these other things instead of meeting with him on my own, then that'll get me to him. And I want to tell you today, false, I don't care how many podcasts you listen to, the only way to draw near to Christ is to pursue him. There's an intimacy when you say, Lord, I need you. I need this good news because it's still transforming. It's still changing. It's still doing things in my life I yet not understand. This is good news. This is great news. But the only way to draw near to Christ is to remain close to him. That's the only way to do it. I want to tell you, no one's ever gotten saved in a comment section, so stop wasting your time. Putting a Bible verse under your profile picture doesn't make you a better Christian. It should hold you accountable to what you're saying. I know, I'm stepping on some people's toes. It's okay, this is not my church, so. Uh, <laughs> I preach like this at my church, and for some reason, they keep on coming back. John 15, 4 to 5, Jesus says this. He says, remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine." Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. What happens when fruit that gets plucked from the vine and never meets the intended target? It spoils. It rottens. Some of you guys know this full well. You bought a whole thing of bananas, and they're as brown as me right now, sitting in your house with potential to eat it. It's banana soup now. But that's what happens with Christians. The Lord fills us with fruit, and yet we don't go and we don't nourish someone by telling them the gospel. And so we get stale and we get rotten. And instead of being a, 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 a partner in the gospel, we become a critic of the gospel. We become a critic of the church. You want to know what spoiled Christian sounds like? You want to know what rotten Christianity sounds like? I don't like the song that they did. I don't like the color of the carpet. I wish the pastor would do this. How come Pastor Nathan just doesn't preach the gospel? Why you That's spoiled Christianity. That's spoiled Christianity. I wish they would do this. When you were supposed to contend for the gospel, we become critics. We've gotten spoiled. We, we, some of us think we were saved to just be put on a shelf and be a trophy Christian. I just want to stand there and look pretty, but you have to understand that when God redeemed you, he not only redeemed you to put you on a shelf and go, oh, look at that. He redeemed you and he restores you to kingdom work. That means he brought you back. He bought you back. And not only did he say, I'm going to put, he says, you know, I can't put you on the shelf. I got to restore you to kingdom work. And I know the, the word work sounds nasty to some of you. It's a curse word. Ugh. Some of, you guys, some of our theologies is like, well, when we go to heaven, we don't have to work anymore. I'm here to burst your bubble. There will be work, y'all. Okay? 
Work was established before the fall of man. Go and read it for yourself. I promise you it was there. But it was a redeemed work. You see, the Lord fills you with the Holy Spirit to redeem your work. When you go to the workplace full of the Holy Spirit, he wants to redeem you. Am I speaking to someone in here? He wants to redeem your work. And you may be like, Pastor, I sit at a cubicle. That's redeemed work. Pastor, I work with my hands. It's redeemed work. When, when you give it to the Lord, please, it's good to have a retirement plan. It's good. But don't depend on it. Heaven is a way better retirement plan, let me tell you. It's way better. And there's, guess what? There's no corruption in it. Some of you guys are like, well, I'll do this when I retire. Do it if you can now. You are redeemed and you are restored for a kingdom work now. Kingdom workers bear fruit. That's what we're called to do. We are called to bear fruit. We are a reflection of the heart of God. This is why the Christian who is active in the church and serving in their church, and they're a part of the local community, and they're a part of the local expression, you, are, you have fruit. Everyone has heard of the fruit of the Spirit, right? Right, amen. If you haven't, Pastor Nathan's going to preach about it at some point. All right, it's the fruit of the Spirit. When people meet you, they are nourished because you are bearing fruit. If you have people walk away from you, and you're just like, Maybe you're not bearing fruit, but if people walk away and they're like, man, I'm encouraged, I'm inspired, I'm challenged, I'm a little sore, that means you are bearing fruit. And it, guess what? Fruit that's eaten and doesn't spoil is nourished fruit, and you bear more fruit. In Matthew 9.35, are you guys with me this morning? Amen? Amen. Thank God. I'm glad you guys got here. I know you guys, 50% of you guys came for the tacos. I know it. We got you, though. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> we don't feel bad. <laughs> Next week is like hot dog week. We're going to get you again, you know. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, I just came here for the tacos. I didn't know I was going to get all this. Matthew 9.35. Matthew 9.35. We're going to look. We're going to see this in the life of Jesus and the disciples when they walk the earth. It says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages. Y'all see that? Jesus went through. You see, a lot of us Christians, we've been conditioned and even believe that we were not made to go through, so we try to go around. We try to go under it. We try to go to the side of it. We try to go above it. But it says that Jesus went through. And I think a large part of the reason why the secular world has lost so much hope in the church is because there's too many Christians who are not willing to go through. We say, hey, you know, ooh, I see you going through that divorce. I'll see you on the other side. Ooh, I see those kids. They're acting crazy. I'll see you on the other side. Ooh, I see that addiction. It's getting out of control. I'll see you on the other side. I wonder what it would look like if we as believers, like, you know what, I'm not going to see you on the other side. I'm going to go through this with you. I'm not going to leave you. It's, but that's the heart of the Father. He says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit that filled Jesus now fills us to go through with people. I'm going to go through with you. What do you, talk, what do you do when you talk to the person who's like, hey, I feel like giving up on Jesus. I think I'm more agnostic or more atheist. It says, hey, you know what? We're, most people will leave. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to stay with you. I know you're deconstructing right now. I know you're breaking things down right now. And typically, Christians, that's when we check out and be like, you got a lot going on, right? Anyone ever do it? You got a lot going on. You just need to figure that out. But we lose the opportunity to minister to people because we don't take the time to go through with them. What would it look like if believers, if someone's struggling with their sexual identity or someone's struggling with their own, oh, I, don't, I can't help them, they're Democrat, they're Republican, and God is like, are you crazy? You think I live in any political party? God lives by his own, on his own. That's the God that I serve. So he says, Jesus went through. I think we need to get in the posture of going through. Because that's when the Lord wants to use your pain for his purpose. 
You didn't go through that pain only just to have it for yourself. You went through that pain because there's someone you got to lock arms with and go through with them. You got to go through with the mother and the father who didn't see that child come to pass. You got to go through the person whose marriage didn't make it through the tough time. You got to go through with the person whose business started and it crashed. You got to go through because God's going to turn, give some purpose to your pain. And you got to go through with them. That's when the hope of the church starts being revealed is that when we stand up and say, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not even going to tell you to meet me at church. Meet me at my house. We will go through together. We will cry together. We will eat together. We will pray together. I'm going to go through with you because Jesus went through with me. So I'm going to go through with you. We can't dodge people. We can't say that's Pastor Nathan's problem. That's Pastor Nathan's person. No, no, no. You are a royal priesthood. I tell my church this. I'm going to tell you all this too. I may not get invited back, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> Pastor Nathan's job is not to feed you on Monday. His job is to equip you. He is teaching you how to cook. Sundays, he's teaching you on like, this is what the meal could be. Monday, go feed your family. Moms, dads, Mondays are for you to start cooking for your family. Hey, I, gotta, I know he's giving me the tools. That's what it says. That's the job of a pastor is to equip the saints for the work. Some of us have left. I, when I hear people like, oh, I left my church, they weren't feeding me. They're not supposed to feed you Monday through Saturday. They're supposed to give you an appetizer. Mm, this is what it could be. This is, are you, I got to go do it myself. But some, when I hear that from people, that just feeds into the consumer culture where the, you think the pastor's supposed to feed you every day of the week. And yet he's got his own family. It's time for you to start cooking. It's time for you to go through. Don't go around it. Don't, and it's what's so funny, I think some of us, we see our testimony diminish when we try to go around it. Can I tell you that people don't want to meet you here at this church. They want to meet you at your house first. That's going through with someone. is saying, hey, you know what? I know you're hurting and we're at work right now. Can you come over for dinner tonight? We'll cook or we'll order pizza because some of you guys are like, that's not your gift. There's no, you know what I mean? Don't look at your spouse right now. I don't want to see any black eyes out there getting tacos, you know? But saying, come over to my house. People want to know that you're a person. People want to know that you're real before you invite them to where you worship. Come over to my house. Let's go through together. So it says, Jesus traveled through the towns and the villages of that area, and he was teaching. While they were going through, he was teaching. Maybe the reason why the person can't listen to your testimony or why they're not listening to the scriptures or why they're not hearing you is because as you're going, if you're going, th you're not going through with them. It's like, how can I hear you teach? How can I hear you tell me this? But you're not even going through with me. We want to stand on the side and coach and tell them from afar. And they're like, I can't hear you. If you can come through with me, I can see what you're talking about. Sometimes teaching is proximity. It's walking side by side with someone and saying, hey, I'm going to walk with you through this. I know it's tough. I know it's hard. There are going to be times where you don't want me there, but I'm going to stick around. I'm going to stick around. I'm going to go through this with you. And when you go through with someone, you can actually teach them. Hey, be careful stepping out. Be careful for that relationship. Be careful for this. Hey, I'm going through with you. No one hears you from afar. I love parents who are yelling at their kids at a baseball, basketball game. Their kids ain't hearing you. Do you see all the stimulants that's around? They're not listening to you. You want to know where the power comes from? Is when you're the first base coach and you're like, all right, I know there's a lot going on. But hey, when they hit that, I need you to run as fast as you. You see proximity. We can't stand from afar and be like, hey, you should do that. No one's listening to you. It says he was teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Because he went through, 
he healed. Not only did he get to teach, right, he not only put truth in their mind, he healed physical hurts. Some of us, the reason why maybe we are not healing, because I think sometimes we think healing is for someone else. The reason why we are not healing is because we're not going through with someone. But when we partner with someone and there's a hurt in you, you can go through together with someone and be like, I've been where you've been. I remember when we lost that child. I remember when the business didn't work. I remember when our marriage didn't work. I remember when our kids were going crazy. I remember these things. And guess what? Healing begins to happen for the both of you. No longer is it just their healing. We're healing. So he healed them as he went through with them. I wonder if some of us haven't received our healing is because we haven't partnered with someone who has the same brokenness. Lord, I don't, I don't, why am I not healing? God is like, heal someone else, and I guarantee you, your healing will happen at the same time. Go and heal someone else. So he went healing. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. We need more believers with compassion. We need more believers with compassion. I know it's, it's easy to argue with a random stranger on social media whom you'll never see. But that's a waste of time. If we were to have compassion on someone who was hurt, because even the, even, you want to know Jesus loves the people you hate, right? You know that, right? What if we were to have compassion on them and say, I know I don't like them and they don't like me, Lord. But let me see them the way you see them. You know, that's difficult. That's literally denying yourself and taking up the cross. God, you know they get on my last nerves. But help me see them the way you see them so that I can show compassion on them. What if the world is just yearning for Christians with compassion who are not going to judge them or say, I told you so, but will come with them and say, hey, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to support you. We may not agree on the same things, but I love you, and I'm going to walk with you, and I'm going to be a sounding board for you. And when the world seems loud and confusing, I'm going to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to speak to the broken things within you. He had compassion on them. I think sometimes we forget that we need to taste our words before we speak them. We forget. Anyone ever taste your words when you're getting angry at your kids and you're like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I know what it's like. I got three kids. Sometimes you won't say words that you're like, those, those are salty words. Mm. <laughs> he said he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, which is very funny. Because in 2020 to 2022, people were trying to offend you by calling you a sheeple. People, you guys are sheep. And my response was like, well, Jesus goes after them. He leaves the 99 of them and goes for the one of them. So I'm going to be a sheep. Jesus said it himself. I think, how could we use that as an offense? You were just sheeple. Well, Jesus died for the sheep. You know what? Matter of fact, the Bible calls him a lamb that was slain. So if he's a sheep, I, I want to be that too. Because he'll come after me too. You want to know what he doesn't go after? It doesn't say he goes after goats. It doesn't say he goes after bulls. It doesn't say he goes after iguanas. No, he goes after sheep. So if he's going after sheep, being a sheep is a good thing to be. You're in great company. You're in great company. It was very silly when people were using that as an offense. I was just like, I am a sheep. I am. You're a sheeple. That's right. The Lord found me in my brokenness. You're right. I wandered away, and yet he came after me. You're right. I'm the ultimate person. I, I like when people try to, people have tried to offend me, but I just get so bubbly sometimes where I'm like, Aw, you really tried. You can't, no one can be your enemy if you see them as an opportunity. You have zero enemies. I've had people call me the worst of names. Grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I got cursed at crossing the street wrong. 
I'm different. That's okay. And people have called me terrible things. But I've learned that for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of the kingdom glory, I will not be offended. Yes, your words may hurt, but I will not allow it to offend me. That's a whole sermon for a whole other day. Jesus says, he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into the fields. Send more workers. The harvest is great and the workers are few. I think some of us signed up and we didn't want to be a worker and we saw all this harvest and God is like, I need you because the workers are few. And Pastor Nathan has been praying for a people who would come to this church and help with the harvest. The workers are few. I want to show, Jesus is calling us to work. We need to work. The reason why we're raising money for Rio Lagardo is because we need to work. And if you can't go, that's okay. Eat more tacos and give more money. We need to work. I want to show you guys how God revealed to me, the Holy Spirit revealed to me what work is. I don't know if you've ever seen this book. This is Green Eggs and Ham. Who here has read it? Some of you guys are like, that's the only book I've ever read in my life. This in the Bible, green eggs and ham, best 50 words I've ever repeated in my life. Some of you guys are like, I learned how to read from that book. Green eggs and ham. I love this book because it talks about the main character, Sam I Am. And what does Sam I Am want to do? He wants this guy who, a friend of his, to say, hey, you should try green eggs and ham. And here how, here's how the nasty guy responds because I didn't, I didn't like it. That Sam I am, that Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. If someone offered me free food, I would be like, mm, mm. maybe he was upset because it was green. I'm like, Sam, that's kind of old. Give me something fresh. But he was upset. He keeps on giving me green eggs and ham. And Sam I am goes, do you like green eggs and ham? And if you know it, say it with me. Will you eat them here? Or will you eat them there? There you go. There you, I'm proud of you guys. I'll, I'll give you a dollar for a taco later. He goes, I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and him. I bet you some of you guys came to church today not knowing that you were going to read a child's book. But here we are reading a child's book to the glory of the Lord. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. And he walks away and he storms off like an angry teenager. <laughs> you guys know that. Slams the door. I don't like him. And then so Sam I am goes, all right, maybe he doesn't like him here and there. Maybe in a house. Maybe with a mouse. He's like, maybe it was location. Okay, I get it. Maybe it's a location. Maybe not here or there. Maybe in a house. Maybe with a mouse. Maybe in a box, maybe with a fox. The options are endless, like wherever you want to go. And he gets upset. I do not like them in a house with a mouse. I do not like them with a box or with a fox. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. And Sam, I am goes, okay, all right. You've made your point. Maybe on a train. <laughs> Maybe on a train. Maybe in the rain, right? You guys know this. Maybe in the rain. Maybe, maybe you'll like them just in a moving. Maybe their food needs to be moving, okay? I get it. Like maybe in the train, maybe in the rain. And he gets upset. He goes, Sam, I am. Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. And then he goes, okay, maybe on a boat. <laughs> Sam, Sam is upping the ante now. He's like, all right. <laughs> Box didn't work. Get a boat. <laughs> maybe on a boat, maybe with a goat. And then the train. Testify, girl. Come on. <laughs> you could leave her in here. Let her testify. And so the boat, I mean the train that they're on, because he's asking him, maybe in the train, and the train runs off the train tracks, and it crashes into the boat. And there's massive chaos and calamity everywhere over green eggs and ham. There's massive chaos and calamity over green eggs because this guy won't try green eggs. If I was a pastor, I'm like, please, just eat it. 
please. There's calamity. We're all, like, you see it. Like, everyone's in the water. And, he, and they're floating in the water. And Sam, I am like, you want to try green eggs and ham? And the guy's like, do you not see the catastrophe all around me? Do you not see that the train ran off the train track and crashed into the boat? And now every pedestrian is in the water with me looking at us while they're looking for life preservers. And you're here asking me about green eggs and ham. We are drowning. But you want me to eat. He's like, yeah. Yes. I want you to eat this green eggs and ham. Try them, try them. You will see that you will like them just as much as me. He's like, Sam, I am. If you will let me be, I will try your green eggs and ham. So look how reluctant he tries it, right? A part of me as a parent, you know, as a parent, you just want to take it back. Like, fine, don't try it. <laughs> how many of us done that, right? We get, fine, don't eat it. Kids, I'm grateful. I gave you four snacks already. Give me that one back. So he tries it, and he goes, say, I like, I like this green eggs and ham. I really do like them, Sam, I am. I really like this. I'll, uh, you know what? I, I'll see why you'll eat them in a house with a mouse. I understand why you'll eat them in the box with a fox. I really like these green. I'll eat them here and there. I'll eat them in the train. I'll eat them in the rain. I'll eat them in the boat with a goat. Like, just anytime you're eating this, invite me. I really like green eggs and ham. I really like them. Sam, I am. And that's how the book ends. And it's like, I really do like it. And the Lord showed me that like Sam, I am, the scripture literally says that we have to be as cunning as snakes and yet as gentle as doves. You see, Sam, I am, didn't get his, in his emotions and get offended and go, fine. I'm, I've offered you Christianity. I've offered you Jesus. Fine, you're not getting it. I'm going to give up. Sam I am woke up and he understood the Bible verse, the psalm that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. He understood that no matter the circumstance, I need to keep offering this green eggs and ham. Because us as believers, no matter the circumstance, we need to keep offering Jesus. We need to keep showing them Jesus. We need to keep bringing him up in conversation. We need to keep on bringing up in the workplace. We need to keep on bringing him up because it's like as soon as they taste it, as soon as they encounter Jesus, they will see that the Lord is good. He didn't get tired. Some of us get tired, and we get offended, and so we pull back. We stopped inviting them to church because we heard what they said. We stopped inviting them to community because what they said offended us. But like Sam, I am, I pray that we have Christians who don't get offended, and they keep on going to this unnamed guy and still offer them to him Jesus in the purest form what would it look like if we were like I know we don't agree on politics but I don't care I know we don't agree on your lifestyle choices I don't care but I know when I offer Jesus at some point because look at the time in the book right the train ran off the track into a boat and there was massive calamity everywhere we live in a world where there's massive calamity everywhere and guess what? Some of us Christians, we got caught up and we're freaking out. Ah, calamity everywhere. When we need to be the ones that's like, hey, I know the man who brings it all together. I know the man who holds it all together. And he's redeemed me. And he's set me free. But so many of us, we give up because we see the calamity and we're like, I got to take care of my own. And yet the Lord has called us to someone else and say, show them me when there's chaos all around them. Show them me when there's confusion all around them. What? I don't buy into the news that says, oh, people are leaving the church in droves. It's okay. He's bringing them back in droves too. But they don't want to report that. You want to know why they're coming back? Because the harvest is plenty. And the workers are few, but the workers keep on saying, hey, you got to come with me. Galatians 6, 9 says, do not grow weary in doing good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest. Worship team, come up. 
we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. There have been many times in our life where the world has said, stop talking about Jesus. Stop telling us about Jesus. You're forcing Christianity down our throat. Why do you keep talking about Jesus? Why do you keep bringing him up? Why do you keep, to, why do you keep on saying that there's a place? Why do you keep on inviting me? You know I hate you. You know I don't like you. But you're standing there with this platter and says, but if you would just taste the Lord. I know you may not like me, but, but, but look at Jesus. Look at him. Look at what he's done for me. Look at how he's transformed my family. Look at how he's changed my marriage. And the same thing that he did for me, he can do for you. You just have to taste and see. Just taste and see for yourself. You can't grow weary. Because you know what Sam I am was in this book? A servant. He was a servant. That's it. He showed up with his tray. At every moment. You want to try him now? I think we forget that we're called to be servants. A servant above all. Jesus Christ says, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. If we forget that we're just here to serve and say, this is who Jesus is. I know this meal. I've had this meal for myself. This is who he is. And I know what the world is feeding you as well. This is why you're still hungry. This is why you can make six figures and still have no rest. This is why you can be all, you can be in a room full of people at a club and still feel empty like no one sees you. This is why the hurt has lingered longer than it should because yeah, I'm just here to serve you Jesus. If you could just take this Jesus, I promise you, he gives you more fulfillment than you understand and you'll never go back to what the world is feeding you because this meal is so good. You'll never want another thing ever again. I love that Jesus washed the feet of the disciples before he died. Because he went with his water God is calling us with our trays. Will you just serve them? Will you just serve them? I'm not having them. Just serve them. Just look like me and serve them. But God, what, are the, what do I have to inject a Bible verse into the conversation? Come on, how many of us struggle with that? Maybe I got to inject a Bible verse. Maybe I'll send him a Bible verse. And he's like, you don't got to do all that yet. Just serve them. They will see that I'm good because you serve them in the midst of chaos and calamity. Does everyone receive that today? Stand to your feet. I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know how long some of you have been walking with the Lord, but today's the day to pick up your tray and serve someone. Sometimes you don't even have to go far. If your marriage is hurting and it's broken, it's serving your spouse. If you are at odds with your kids and that's not working, it's serving your kids. But what are they going to serve me? That's not what the Lord is worried about. He says, serve them. If it's someone at your job who you're at odds with and you just can't find peace, serve them. Why do I keep on showing up and serving them, Lord? Because Jesus says, love covers a multitude of sins. Maybe there's someone in your neighborhood that you don't like. Maybe there's something in your heart that you don't like about a separate group of people. Serve them. Because just like at the Last Supper, the very man who would trade up Jesus, he washed his feet. So if Jesus can wash the feet of someone who had ill intent and, tra and traded him and betrayed him, how much more can we pick up our trays and say, hey, I'm just here to serve? In hopes that one day you'll see Jesus through me. And then at that point, you'll see him for yourself.
every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray. Father, we just thank you for who you are. We just thank you, Lord God, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit to do the work of the Lord. Father, show us as a people how to serve those who are far from you. Show us how to serve those that they might see Christ in our service, that they might see Christ in what we do, and not only what we say, but what we do. Lord God, that we don't give up doing the work of the Lord, that we don't grow weary in doing good, because at due time, we will see a victory. We will reap a harvest. The wayward child will come home. The awkward coworker will come to Christ. The estranged marriage will be made whole. Those lost will come and see you. And it's because we serve them the way you serve us. And so we serve you, Lord, for your kingdom glory. Father, we don't pray for an easy life. We pray for strong spirits. So strengthen us and strengthen us again that the glory of the Lord may be revealed in what we do and what we say. In Jesus' name, and everyone said. Church, can we thank Pastor Jeremy? What a great message. It was awesome. Beautiful, thank you. Great message. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is sing this song, uh, then we're gonna have a few little announcements and then we'll go eat. But I'd like to challenge you with two things as we sing. Whoever you're thinking of, whatever that, whoever that neighbor may be, someone that maybe has been on your heart throughout this message, I want to encourage you to invite that person over for a meal, maybe this week, maybe next week, and begin to live out what he talked about. I also want to encourage you as we sing this to cry out for your own need for God once again. We forget that we can taste and see that the Lord is good. He doesn't want us living in, in, in the, the depths of shame and brokenness and fear and anxiousness that we get stuck in. So as we sing this, I pray you'll let your heart and your soul and spirit rise up to the Lord. Confess your need for him. So Lord, as we sing it, we confess we need you. And we also say, Lord, use us in the lives of, of these neighbors, these friends, these family members. They need you. They need to taste and see you. And may we have the persistence, the perseverance, the, the unoffendable spirit and the joy and the servanthood of the guy in the book. <laughs> Is it Sam I am? Okay. May we, I didn't want to say the wrong name. May we all be the Sam I Am's. <laughs> Let's sing, church, and then we'll, I'll come up and we'll close out.